Well, let's talk about the big thing first. I, I said that this was going. I said on Twitter that this is going to be you know, a Sunday type bid, but uh, this got moved to tonight. Um, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night around the same time, I imagine. You know, well, maybe like eleven. I think I said we we'll talking this weekend indoor football. Got a lot of got a lot of stuff to say there. Um, you know, Major League Football. First things first. They were supposed to have a season starting. You know, in less than two weeks, August 9th to September the sixth. Four game season. You know, most of the rules. You know, were similar to the NFL, except for like a 30 second play clock. With, you know, an NFL Europe rule with the field goals counted for four points, the ground call is like a fumble, and then overtime, you know, you know, it starts off like XF, uh, NFL rules, and then it shifts to XFL rules. But unfortunately, you know, the four teams that were supposed to play the Alabama Airboard, coached by Jerry Glanville, the Arkansas Attack, coached by Ernest Wilson, the Ohio Force, coached by Bill Conley of the Virginia Armada, coached by Terry Shea, you know, Glanville and Shea are both legendary coaches in, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, things did not work out the way they were supposed to work out. You know, multiple teams were evicted from their hotels with unpaid bills and you know stuff like that you know the league basically you know essentially shutting down and you know saying that there had been a funding delay or whatever cues that quotations and you know the funds were just not there and they just you know players they couldn't afford the hotels players some players were stranded some players had to you know get you know other people to bring them home and whatnot. It's just it's just a shame. It truly is a shame. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's so sad to see, you know, this happen again. Because Major League Football's been trying to get off the ground for years. And it just it hasn't worked out. It hasn't worked out at all. Moving on to the XFL, because we gotta talk the XFL, you know, the coaches they the sides their teams, the stadiums have been confirmed for the most part. Uh, there's still one that's kind of in a tricky situation. We know the XFL draft will be in November. Don't know what the team names will be right now. Uh, I guess I'll do a video later on that. And then like the USFL, a lot of players have been signed from the USFL to the NFL. We'll talk about those USFL players in a moment. Let's talk about the XFL cities and coaches first. Of course, Arlington, Texas, Choctaw Stadium, that disgusting looking stadium down there in Arlington, you know, the old Rangers baseball field, you know, Bob Stute's going to be the coach out there. Houston at TDECU Stadium with Wade Phillips at the helm. Orlando's going to be Camping World Stadium, home of UCF. Terrell Buckley lead the charge there. Las Vegas more than likely will be at Allegiant Stadium. I don't see Sam Boyd be the option because I mean that stadium really isn't used for anything anymore and Rod Woodson he's going to be leading the charge out there Heinz Ward at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio going to be leading the charge for whatever that San Antonio team's going to be called and then you got Seattle at Lumen Field with Jim Haslett St. Louis, the Battle Hawks. They're probably going to be called the Battle Hawks. They're not called the Battle Hawks. I don't know what's going to be. I don't know. We're going to have to have a problem because we uh, I do know, you know, Vince McMahon probably still has, you know, some say in those XFL trademarks, but I mean, who knows at this point? You know, the Dome with Anthony Beck, St. Louis, it's going to be rocking. And in Washington, D.C., going to be at Audi Field, Reggie Barlow. Um, for the most part, it seems like, you know, trade camps and practices will be held in the Arlington area and then you know teams will get on you know planes and buses and whatnot going back to their respective you know cities for the games which I mean doesn't it makes sense but at the same time you know kind of stupid but I mean it is what it is 
uh, there's gonna be like multiple, you know, um, high school fields and stuff in use for these practices and trade camps later on. So, here you go. XFL. Gonna be lit. Um, that's all I got for the XFL right now. USFL. Um, let me tell you. A lot of guys have been signed. You know, you got Kyle Sloter going to Jacksonville. The MVP of the championship game. Victor Bolton. He went to Arizona. You know, I know, I know there's other guys they got signed. Like Sal Canella. He's going to Green Bay. You know, Vegas got a couple guys. Washington got a couple guys, especially Channing Stripling, who was a bona fide stud, you know, this year. I mean, there have been plenty of signings by plenty of teams. The Chargers have gotten some guys, you know, the Rams, um, New England, Pittsburgh. I mean, everybody, you know, is getting in on it. And, um, you know, Kevontae Turpin, he went to the Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Um... You know, it is what it is. Um, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be intriguing to see how some of these guys are going to adjust. Because we know some of these guys are going to be signed and ready to go for 53-man rosters come September. Um, you know, I, I expect guys like Turpin, guys like Stripling, you know, uh, Victor Bolden. You know, I expect those guys... To be signed and have you know a whole you know a whole NFL season ready to go you know for them. That's the beauty of spring football, right there, baby. It's the beauty of it all. It's the real beauty of it all. You know, it is what it is. And I mean, kudos to the USFL for actually you know getting stuff like this done. You know, they, you know they they played their full season. They got players signed successfully. That is what you want to see. You know, and who knows? Who knows what in the world the future holds for some of these guys. You know, maybe they get cut sometime later in August. You know, whatever. I mean, and it'd be sad. But, I mean, hey, they still got to play a full season of games and everything like that. They still got that paper, which is, you know, important as well. And they got the experience getting back out there on the field and doing what they love, you know. So there you have it. Um, I know, I know, I know. I skipped over a lot of guys, you know, that got signed. But I mean, there's just been so many signings over the past few weeks. You know, it, it's crazy to keep up with. Um. So with that being said, tomorrow will be the final video of the month. I'll be back. It'll be early Monday morning. You know, when you get that channel update, when that channel update hits your inboxes, sure like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, follow me on, you know, this app, you know, YouTube, you know, I would, I would really say go to my Twitter, you know, it, it's there. Listen to the Objective Slant podcast, which is, you know, very infrequent, but it exists, and I'll see you all tomorrow night. For this week of digital football, the what third to last, probably the penultimate this week of the football until the championships, August the 13th. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow night.